Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. My wife suggested a project for me. She said it was ideal because it would be a simple project. It is a magnetic pin bowl, or for pins for her sewing, or for paper clips, or safety pins, or whatever for office supplies or small parts. Magnet, magnet inside keeps things in place, but in the end it's really not all that simple because you need to embed a magnet in it. Now I could have done a split turning like a, the UFO I did a while ago, but I decided to make it segmented. Then with segmented, pro the issue is when you bring points together, they often pull apart. So I decided to try to make my own, in this case, walnut plywood that I would put into the bottom and make sure that nothing came apart in the process. So that's a new part, and then there's a magnet and another one. It turns out that figuring this thing out was actually much more work than the actual turning. But for now, let's, uh, I don't know whether she'll use this for paper clips, safety pins, or straight pins. But we'll make for my wife her magnetic bowl. I had some 1 8 inch thick pieces of walnut left over from my Celtic knot project. I cut it into squares, spread glue, and clamped it in a small press. A little parchment paper between the two sets of plies kept them from sticking together. I did this first so the glue could harden. Next, I held the largest ring in my large jaws and glued the second ring to it. These two rings will become the top of the bowl. Next, I used double stick tape to stick one piece of my homemade plywood to a faceplate. Measured and marked my desired diameter, then cut it with a small gouge, then a small skew to refine the outer edge. Then I swapped the faceplate for the two top rings that were still in the large jaws. Here I marked the approximate diameter of my plywood disc on the bottom side of the top rings. Then I hollowed it out to accept the plywood. I'm using the plywood to avoid a bunch of segment points coming together at one spot. I've had some fail due to moisture changes, but the three layers of my plywood should be more stable and avoid cracks in the bottom of the bowl. I want the plywood to be about 1 8 inch thick once it's tooled. This is a balance for the thickness because magnetic force drops significantly with distance. Finally, I glued the plywood in place. Now for the bottom ring. It is a smidgen too large for my smaller jaws, so I've mounted it with the jaws closed with the wood pressed between the jaws and a rubber stopper on the live center. With it now perfectly round and a trifle smaller, I can put it in the jaws with a little spacer between the wood and drill out what will become the hollow of the foot. This hole goes clear through the wood and is followed by drilling a slightly larger hole only part way. This will be the mortise for the plywood bottom. That was my largest bit, so I'm enlarging the hole just a little more. Next, I need to size the plywood disc. Again, I'll use double stick tape and a wood faceplate. Once it fits, I can glue it into the mortise. The hollow on the other side will become the foot. Then I used hot melt glue to fasten the ring to a threaded wood faceplate. With the glue dry on the top rings and their bottom, I need to flatten the bottom to glue on the next ring. But here I have a problem. I need the next ring perfectly centered, but it is a small diameter and thin. My solution is to use its center hole to center it onto a wood face plate held by double stick tape. Then put the chuck back on the lathe and reverse the face plate onto a cone live center and keep all these rings perfectly centered. No slop allowed here. With that glue dry, I can drill out the hole for the magnet. This was almost a mistake because I did not account for the center point of the Forstner bit 
and only noticed the extra hole in the center later. Fortunately, I did not hollow the bolt enough for it to show. Next time, I'll use my lathe tools, not a drill bit. After some fine tuning to allow for the extra metal case of the magnet, it fits. I'll use hot melt glue later to keep it from rattling. Finally, I need to glue the top to the bottom. The bottom has some extra wood protruding that is preventing a good joint. I'm tooling that back into somewhat of a tenon into the magnet hole. Then glue the base to the top with a magnet encased in between. Finally, I can actually tool the bowl. It does not take very long to shape the exterior, then hollow the interior. I need to be careful of my dimensions, especially not to expose the magnet either from the top or from the side. Then sand and finish the bowl so far. I used Mylan's friction polish. Then I'm using a parting tool to cut through most of the hot milk glue. I still need to finish the foot. I've wrapped the rim with four layers of masking tape and mounted it into my large jaws with a rubber stopper on the left center. I'm using a scraper to gently remove the remaining wood. Then sand and finish the base area. Then a quick buffing with my buffing system. Fortunately, the bowl is shallow enough to use the buffing wheels instead of the smaller bowl buffs. Now my wife's magnetic bowl is ready for all the sewing pins, paper clips, safety pins, or whatever sewing or other supplies she wants that is magnetic. I had feared that the bowl's bottom would be too thick and weaken the magnetic field, but those were only fears and not reality. The magnetism is actually a little stronger than I expected and works great. Best of all, it is wife approved. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. I love feedback via comments. Please like this video and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.